Welcome to another edition of the Sim Racing Garage. I'm Barry Rowland. In this episode, we will be reviewing the Club Sport 2.5 wheelbase from Fnatic. This is their flagship belt-driven wheelbase and looks the part when you first have it in hand. Of course, looks aren't everything, and we will be putting it through the SRG's review process to see how it does. So, let's get to it. Now for a closer look at the Fanatec or Fanatic Club Sport V 2.5 wheelbase. And first off, when you take this wheelbase out of the box, it, it really presents itself well. It shows well. Typical of the more expensive pieces that you get from Fanatic. It's, uh, yeah, just all the way around. It, it, and it's got some heft to it. It's got this nice cover on the back where our connections are going to be for the USB and for any peripherals we want to put into it. And, of course, our power connector over there. It's got this rubber coating on it. It's kind of a matte finish. You can see how shiny that plex is on the top. It's kind of a tinted plexiglass on there. I can get the light to quit shining all over it. And that lets us see things moving around inside. But we're going to take a look inside and get a better look, I think. Right, we got the big fan over here to keep everything nice and cool. And again, I like this rubber finish they have on this plastic bit or part that will come off of that. You can actually take this whole thing off, but we'll see that later on. I do like the finish there. And of course, the rest of the finish is anodized aluminum. We've got some cooling vents here, and you can actually see inside the wheelbase there. So there's actually a hole there. See that? For airflow. And if we go around to the other side of the wheelbase, you can see there's a fan there too. So we've got a fan here, and we've got a fan on the back. So two fans to move air around here. So I imagine that's going to keep this wheelbase pretty cool. I think they've got it all sorted by now with this, this wheelbase. And this wheelbase does have a nice finish on the front. It's got that brushed aluminum bits going on there. And of course, we all these all the bolts and fasteners on here are this little, they're, they're kind of a, I guess the best way to say is a, kind of a grayish color to it, right? Some gunmetal gray, I guess you could call it. And which obviously adds to the pleasing aesthetics of this front plate. We've got the nice fanatic label on there. I can't tell if that's silk screened on there. That's a decal. It's hard to tell at this point. I think it might be a decal. These We got some bolts here. You see these little cluster of bolts? We have some here and we have some over here. And these are tensioning bolts. You can see that they have slots in them. All right. So you can see the slots on those guys there. And this allows us to tension the belts. We have a belt over here sitting on a pulley. And this is the motor mount over here. That's why you see four of them spread apart so that we can actually put tension on the belt by moving the motor that way. Of course, that's all pre-tensioned at the factory. You shouldn't be messing with that unless there's a problem and you feel like you have to. Right, now the usual stem coming out of here, or shaft, if you will, that connects to the wheels. We can see the socket in there for our steering wheel pins when we do the quick release, fanatic quick release on there. It has a rubber O-ring on here, and that just helps seal the wheel. I, I suppose that's what that's for. It gives it a little grip. And you do get an extra one I'll show you in a minute. So if you wear that one out, you'll have another one. Here we have the power button and also the Xbox indicator. This will be red for PC and green when we're running it in Xbox mode. There is no PlayStation support on this wheelbase. So it's either Xbox or PC. Of course, I'll be running it on a PC. So no issues or big deals there. Anything else I want to look at here? Really not a whole lot to see as far as the exterior of it. I'll show you the bottom, I guess, so you guys can see what the label looks like on the bottom for the Club Sport label. All right. And yeah, not much else to see here to talk about. You do get some accessories. Now, you get the 20-degree mounting bracket here. And this actually came on this wheelbase when I pulled it out of the box. It has three mounting holes here, the usual typical uh, Fanatec or Fanatic triple pattern there, a triangle pattern for mounting. And of course, that just mounts onto the bottom of the wheelbase, just like this, right? And I took that off. So, yeah, it's, I didn't need it because of the wheel deck I would be mounting it to. And again, these gunmetal gray, these really high gloss gunmetal gray button head 6 mil or M6 screws here. And you also get some extra ones. You get a little pack of four more of the same screws. So if you want to mount this, the bracket to something then you can and you can see the bracket actually has let's see how well i can get you guys to see that there's some threads in there see how it's already been tapped for threads so 
So these, and those are M6 threads, obviously, because these are M6 screws that we're going to be using. So yeah, if you want to attach it to a base, then that's how you would do it. And you, you would have to come, either come on the top here. Actually, you couldn't even do it on this side. Yeah, that's strange. See, this, this piece over here is actually longer than this piece. I'm not sure if it has something to do with what's going on with the wheelbase shape. But yeah, you can see this one's actually a little thinner, not as wide as this guy over here. And that means that the holes on this one are pretty accessible from the top if you want to mount this. But then you still have to mount it from the bottom. So typically what you'll be doing here is mounting this first to your wheelbase and then coming up from underneath whatever you're using to mount it to and put your screws in. That's about the only way to do this because you can't even access these holes from the top. So you can see them over there, but yeah, there's no way you're going to get to them. All right, what else we get here? We get, of course, a power cord. And this is a, this is actually a European one. <laughs> so it's got the little poles on it. Of course, I'm in North America and we don't use that, but I have another one to take care of that, no big deal. We've got the O-ring that we previously spoke about. All right. And we have an LB interface for the USB here. This is a B interface, but it's in that L 90 degree angle, if you will, so that it will fit underneath. When you have this wheel mounted, to be able to get your USB in, you have to get up underneath there like that to be able to get it on there. And of course, the, the 90 degree will help it clear coming back out. And yeah, same thing over here on the, oh, by the way, very nice cord here. So they've got uh, ferrite chokes on both sides of this cord. Very, it feels like a substantial cord. So the usual Fanatic did a good job there. And we have the power supply over here. And this also has a ferrite choke on it next to the power lead over there. And of course we have the typical, I believe that's a 3.5 millimeter lead. And let's look at this power supply and see what it'll put out. The output is 24 volts at seven and a half amps. I'll let you guys take a look at that so you can read it for yourself. So 24 volts, yeah, that's some, um, that's, that's pretty good power for this motor. This motor, actually they say up to eight Newton meters and I'm pretty sure the motor itself does not put out eight Newton meters. It's the gears in here, the pulleys that they're using, creates that um, the max 8 newton meters, but the motor itself probably is not 8 newton meter motor. Uh, we'll take a look at it. I doubt there's any kind of uh, labeling or anything on that motor, but we will take a look at it. Now, they also use a direct sensor tech in this wheelbase, what they're calling that. Basically, it's a hall sensor, but there's two of them. We have one of them over here on the back of the motor, and we'll try to see that once we do a look inside. We have another one that's right on the motor shaft on the back here. And yeah, this is, you know, again, having two inputs of what the position is of the shaft is always a good thing, I think. And what else we want to talk about here? We have rib belts, but we'll see more of that once we get in. And cool thing is they actually are using steel bearings. You got a big bearing in there for the shaft, supports the shaft here. Very nice steel bearing in there. And I've already looked inside because, I mean, you know, usually I'd like to check things out before I, you know, actually do videos on them and there's seal bearings throughout this assembly. So it's a really heavy duty assembly. I don't think that uh, you would ever have any problems with the bearings or anything. And they're really big ones too. So are considerably bigger than what you would find in like the Logitechs and things like that. But it should be because this is their flagship belt driven motor. And they actually use groove belts instead of cogged belts or toothed belts, if you will, on their pulleys. But again, we'll see talk more about that once we actually get inside and are able to take a better look at it. Right, so I guess that's about it. Not much else I can talk about. Uh, what I really wanna do is yeah, get to the look inside segment. And that's when we can really see what's going on with this wheelbase. So we'll do that next. Now for one of my favorite segments in my video reviews, and that is the look inside segment. So we're gonna take a look inside obviously. And I'm gonna, first thing I'm gonna do is pull this cover off the back. Now this is a rubber coated or has kind of that rubber texture on it back plastic housing here. Now things of concern here, as I know I have a fan mounted to this cover, or it looks like it's mounted to the cover, which means I'm gonna have a wire coming from that fan going to a circuit board somewhere, probably with a small Molex plug connecting it, but we won't know for sure until we get inside. So what I'm gonna do is we got four screws here, we got two here, two flat heads, and we've got a couple of screws in here that look like some socket head cap bolts or screws, and I believe they're around three mil, but we're gonna go ahead and take the bottom ones off first. And that is a two mil hex there. So a two millimeter hex, and we'll go ahead and pull these out. There we go. 
and I'm going to throw these in my magnetic dish over here so I don't lose them. There's only one thing worse than running out of screws when you're reassembling what you've taken apart, and that is having an extra screw. <laughs> yeah, then you got a then you got a problem. You have to go back in and figure out where that extra screw came from. Because there's now there's something loose inside that shouldn't be loose. All right, so I'm just going to loosen these. I don't know if they'll come all the way out because they're down there in the deep recesses. But I think it'll come out with the cover. Now I'm going to go ahead and gently pull this cover off. And I'm looking for a wire here the whole time. And I'm going to kind of tilt this down while I do this if I can. And let's see, where is that fan wire? There it is. All right, so I'm going to turn this sideways so you guys can see it. There it is. And you can see it's, again, a Molex plug onto that goes onto a circuit board here behind, directly behind the, the shaft of this assembly. Steering wheel shaft, we'll call it. And I'm just going to kind of shake that loose a little bit and plug it, unplug it, and there we go. And there we have our fan. It spins pretty nice. And, yeah, not much else to see here as far as the assembly. And there goes my screws. They're, they're dropping out now. This is a socket head cap, like I said before. These are the longer ones that go on the top. And it looks like about a, this looks like an M3 thread, I'm pretty sure. And we've got some Loctite on there. Very nice unit. Again, the gunmetal gray, I'm calling this color, that Fanatic's been using on this assembly. All right, guys. Let's just chill over there for a while. And let's take a look at what we got at this point. So we've got the main circuit board, I would call this, sitting on the back. And, yeah, that's where the fan was connected. And you can see we have another fan over here on the case, and it's also connected over there on the board. And I might try to pull these side covers off. I'm, 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 like I said, I'm going to do this in stages to see how far we can go without uh, destroying anything. And, yeah, so we've got a circuit board here. We've also got another circuit board here on the back of the motor. And you can see this is the motor because look at the fins. You can see the cooling fins a lot. Of, but those are, those are tall cooling fins on the motor itself. And this will be a positioning sensor and power uh, connection to the motor, I would believe, because it comes to the circuit board here. And then we've got some more wires coming off the top of that circuit board. They're coming up in a loop right underneath this ribbon cable and coming right back down and going into the motor. Oh, you guys can see that there. There we go. So you can see how they're going in the motor. And this little ribbon cable is going back down to this main board here, and that is for our switch up here. Right? So you could actually take that off. This, this was clean assembly. I like the way Fanatic does things as far as their assemblies because this would be something very easy to work on, I think. Right, so what else can we do here? Next thing I'm going to do is try to take this plexiglass piece off. So it's, it's sitting in some grooves, it looks like, in these two metal halves here. See how it's sitting in a groove up there? I think it'll slide out if they haven't glued it in. Hopefully they haven't glued it in. So, yep, there we go. Oh, yeah, that's easy. It's nice and snug, too, so it's not going to rattle. Oh, that's kind of binding up. you got to kind of keep kind of wiggling it to get it out so it doesn't bind up anywhere. Very tight fit, which is good. All right, there we have our smoked plexiglass, or this might be race car Lexan on here. I don't know. <laughs> so I'll set that aside. I don't want to scratch it up. And now we can see more what's going on in the top here and you can see again i like the way fanatic does this stuff you know they got this nice red anodized pulley for the steering column and you know nice shiny aluminum pulley on the other side there that's running another belt and you can see those massive seal bearings that they're using in there very cool easy to maintain too you can see a little clip ring there you can pull that off and the whole assembly will come off so again easy to see that now we can't really see the motor much over here and you can see i have another fan over here as i said i may have said that before i was going to see if i take these off i think that's what i'm going to try to do next so i think these will come off i've got a screw down here and i've got a screw up here and i don't think it affects really too much of the structural integrity of this unit because the structural integrity are based on two main pieces here that is the front plate here and this is a massive aluminum i believe this is aluminum plate here that is eight millimeters thick. So that's pretty thick. So we're gonna do the, yes, magnet test. It definitely is aluminum. So yeah, eight millimeters thick. So this whole plate, this whole front plate, and you can see everything's mounting to it through the bolts. But we also have this cross piece here. I'm calling it an X bracket. Cause it kind of looks like an X on the bottom there. You can see the top part there. And yeah, everything's mounting to that. And these two standoffs, these long metal standoffs here are supporting 
squeezing this together and sandwiching it. And everything else is mounting directly to the front of this plate. And we'll take a closer look at that. If I can get these sides off, I think these two screws here will, will be able to give me access to that. So yeah, when we come back, actually, let me see. Well, I've got a three already. Let me see if I can pull this off. I don't know how tight these are going to be. And I got to be careful when I'm tilting this up. I don't want to lean anything back on that circuit board. Oh, well, that'll come off. All right. I don't know how well this is going to go, so bear with me here. I don't think this will just come right off. That would be sweet if it could, because that'll give us a much better look at what's going on in here. This one's tight down here. Probably got a lot of Loctite on it. And again, these are some socket cap heads. Again, it looks like these might be a four mil. These look thicker than, yeah, these are definitely thicker than what we took out of the back plate, which makes sense because this is a big metal plate here, aluminum plate, and it has some cooling fins on it. All right, let me turn this around here so I can see what I'm doing. Make sure this is not some other connection going on in here. Okay, there is another connection going on in here. They have actually clipped the ribbon cable. They haven't clipped it. They've actually glued it. See that? There's actually two dabs of glue on there. I don't know how that's showing up in the lights. So you got to be very careful with this. You don't want to kink it. You don't want to mess anything up. And again, there's the button, the switch. So again, that's from the switch on the other side. So that's our switch for our turning it on and so forth. Right, so I'm going to gently lay this over here. I can't. Boy, this is not working the way I want to. I wanted it to. Hmm. Well, we could pull the ribbon cable off, but I hesitate to do that. I think I'm just going to kind of... Man, they didn't make this easy, did they? Well, this will give us a look at what's going on with the motor. You know what? I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the ribbon cable off of the board here because it's got the clip there that you can take it off. Pull this off so I don't damage anything. So I'm going to be very careful. When we come back, I'll have that disconnected. Now we're back. And I decided to go ahead and pull the circuit boards loose while I was doing everything else. Um, I did free the ribbon cable off the circuit board very gently and carefully. And I took the other side of the assembly off too that has the fan in it. And you guys can see the fan there. And yeah, good, good ducting there for the ventilation. This thing definitely is well ventilated. And this is going to let us see a little bit more of what's going on here. First thing we'll look at is the main circuit board. And I'm going to flip that around. I've got a close-up angle I'm going to try to use to show you guys this. Gently flip it around a little. There we go. And main thing I want to show you guys on this is this is the sensor. Flip my pointer around. This is the sensor, this little chip here. And it's actually tracking the way this circuit board lines up when you mount it to these holes here. This little sensor here, Hall Effect sensor, is tracking the bottom part of this shaft here, this hollow shaft where all the wires come through. Of course, these wires go out to the front of the, the, the wheel shaft or the steering shaft where the plug is for mounting your wheel. And that's why all the electronics talk back and forth. And yeah, nothing else as far as to see here. Very nicely done board. Everything is, looks very nice and tidy, very neatly done. And there's even a fuse. I don't know why you guys are going to see this, but there's actually a fuse down here. That little piece there is that looks like a fused unit. You can actually pop that out because it's sitting in a, a little bit of a, a plug assembly there. And this is the little plug that we have for our ribbon cable that we took off. Typical ribbon cable kind of plug where you kind of pry the this little piece up here and then it releases the cable. Careful when that's going back on also. And we'll go ahead and look at what's going over here with the motor. Okay. Let's slide this around a little bit this way. You guys can see that. And of course, this is the board. It'll have the position sensor over here and you can see it in the center of the board right there. That's actually tracking. This is the, the piece that they have on the back of the motor shaft. This little pin piece here. Well, you can see that sideways there. See it a little better like that. So this is using that to tell what position the motor is. And of course, these are the power and data cables going into it. And a couple of capacitors, not much else to see. Again, very tidy little board here. Fanatic is very good at doing this stuff. You know, they, they've got it figured out. There are some numbers on this, and I'm, I can't turn this upside down because of the way the circuit boards are. But they are upside down numbers. And if you guys want to do a freeze frame and translate that, you can see what motor is on here. All right. So now that I've done that, I'm going to kind of 
Let's flip this thing around so you guys can see some other stuff. And first we'll go with the motor. And there is the motor pulley and its accompanying belt there. And of course this belt goes all the way over to the other pulley on the other side. I'll show you in a second. But you can see these are the mounting points for the motor. The motor has two mounts right there. It has two screws holding this mount. The motor's actually bolted on there. Looks like we've got some hot glue remnants there. And yeah, so I'm actually going to turn that. You can see it turning. And then of course this bracket itself mounts to the front of the case. And this is where we can actually mount these things. You know, I'd rather tension the belt that is on the pulley here. And again, these are serpentine belts. These are not the cogged belts. So it, it will make for smoother functioning, I believe, at the end of the day. And let's go ahead and slide this around the other side. Make sure my electronics don't get messed up. Okay. So here we see the other pulley. And again, the seal bearings in here. Very heavy duty stuff. And yeah, I don't see how anybody can complain about how this thing is built. It's really built well. This massive eight millimeter plate here that's supporting all this stuff is just, yeah, it's doing a great job. And of course, this X bracket piece up here, um, yeah, sandwiched together with those two standoffs. I can see looking down in here that, yeah, this is a very solid, solid m way to assemble a wheelbase as far as the motor and everything. This is just rock solid, which is, it should be, you know, this is their flagship unit. And you can see a little bit, well, I don't know. Let me see if I can slide this around here. I don't think you're going to be able to see it, but you can see, I can see this from this angle, the serpentine grooves that are supporting the belt. I can turn the belt, I guess, so you guys can see the grooves on it. Maybe, eh, maybe not. It's pretty tight. Anyway, you might be able to see the grooves under here, right in that section. Anyway, so yeah, everything looks really good here. So everything is, when you turn it by hand, it's very, very smooth. You know, there's no cogging whatsoever. It's just silky smooth. And I will show you the, get this out of the way there, this piece here, which is the stop for the motor. And that will go all the way back one way and then hit that plate in the, on the bottom and stop. And then it'll go all the way to the other direction as we're turning it, turning it, turning it. And hit this plate in here and cause it to stop also. And it's just riding on a screw. Let's so get a closer look at it there. This is actually a screw and this is, obviously threaded for that screw, big threads, like a worm gear, if you will, to move it. All right, so that's how everything is working in our V2.5 wheelbase. I'm going to be very careful here. I don't want to yank too much. I would have taken this off, but you can see they've glued this pretty heavily on the cable connecting there, which is a good thing because there's vibrations and all kinds of stuff in this, in this assembly. So you want to make sure nothing's going to come loose. But yeah, that pretty much shows you everything on how all this is coming together and working as it does. And so now all we have to do is get it all put back together. And when I come back, I'll have it all put back together. I'll probably already have it mounted on my rig at that point. Here is the wheelbase mounted to our SimLab P1X or P1 wheel deck, they call this mount. So you can mount things like, of course, the Fanatic QC here or like a Logitech Thrustmaster or any side mount bracket direct drive wheels like the Simicube 1 as we're calling it now or the old OSWs with midges, you know, the Sim Experience AccuForce, stuff like that. So it's a very sturdy mount and this is good because we want to be able to get as much detail out of this wheelbase as we can and starting with a very solid mount like this is paramount to be able to realize that. I currently have the podium wheel mounted here and it works but the button module doesn't work because of the software or firmware um, is just not compatible with that yet as far as this we this particular wheelbase and i have the latest drivers on it so anyway but it works the buttons don't work but the shifters are obviously <laughs> the shifters and everything works so that's cool and if you want to use it for dirt or oval racing stuff like that gotta have a round wheel right but most of the video and probably all the video i'll show you i'll be using the uh, fanatec formula v2 wheel uh, when we're actually doing the driving which we need to go and do right now here are the Fanatic Wheel Properties page, and this is in your game controller. See it over there, game controller section. And this just, what I use this for nowadays is just for checking, compat not compatibility, but the operation of buttons and things. Now you can do other things here if you like also. And 
I'm going to go ahead and show you that we've got the podium, the APMs or advanced podium module on here with the shifters and the clutches. And you can see pictures of it there. And of course, all of our other buttons and things down here that will be lighting up when we do our buttons. And I'm going to go ahead and just do the podium advanced module first. And you can see the right shifter works, turns blue, left shifter works. And I'm going to do my clutch. And you can see both clutches are working over there in the clutch section. Our auxiliary buttons over here for the APMs, all that's working fine. And of course, we want to check our steering wheel buttons. And I'll start down at the bottom. And you can see the, the buttons flash when we move them. And also, I'm going to do the seven-way switch. And that, you can see the D-pad over here next to the analog joystick. That is moving, so that's good. If I turn it left or right, it shows up in the rotary encoder window. And if I push the button, it shows up on the steering wheel. Got to love the seven-way. And our analog over here, joystick, well, you can see that's moving like it should. And we can do our encoders one way or the other, and they do plus or minus. Again, just a place to test everything out and make sure it's working. We can also check out the steering wheel LEDs test. You click on that, all the LEDs will light up. Hopefully they're all working. It looks like they are. And then we'll go to our little screen, our OLED test, and that has the F Fanatic logo on it. To show you that's working so everything's cool we can also get some information on some brief information on what we're doing as far as our firmware for in the driver package we're running i'm running the 352 driver package which is the wheelbase firmware 669 and soft uh, rather steering wheel firmware for 28 currently that's what we're running now i'm going to jump over here to the update tab real quick just to show you that it doesn't show you in that little window when we are at function test that there's also another firmware for the base motor itself Currently, that's set at 22. So that's the latest one for that, 22. So I'm all updated. And if I wasn't updated, then you click here to update. Now, this doesn't always work as designed. Um, you know, drivers in general and computers in general, sometimes they just don't work out when you're trying to update something. I did have a problem updating from version 18 to 22 on my motor firmware. I had to get another package that's 347 and uh, <laughs> uninstall 352, install 347, put a 664, uh, wheel base driver in and have no wheel connected to the base and then manually boot the base into boot mode and then have the firmware for for the 22 uh, already in a hex file on my computer and yeah I had to do it that way to, to get it to update so it was a bit of a uh, and I had to look around the internet to find the sequence the proper sequence to do that but easy enough to find and it what well, is doable just jumping through a few hoops but some people don't have that problem but I did I was one of the unlucky ones that wouldn't update to 22 but we're all good now Settings menu. This is where we can do our wheel center calibration, some other things if you have those features and it will show up in here like the pedals, combine pedals if you want to do things like that. Stuff I never, I usually don't use. Uh, wheel center calibration, very cool. We can just press a button now. It's about time, right? <laughs> of course, this has been out for a while. It's not like it's just came out today. This, the, a lot of this stuff has been out for a while. So no news here really, but it's cooler than having to go into your little menu on the wheel and press two buttons and what says calibrate and all that. Now we can just come in here and press a button. Tuning menu, something I don't use in the driver here because you use Fanata Lab if you, wanted to use, if you wanted to use a tuning menu. And of course, with our latest uh, firmware on the wheelbase, we can use that. Again, just tuning what we can, what's available depending on the game we're in. And of course, different device setups. Uh, there's compatibility mode for the DD1, DD2s in here if you need to use it for a game. Uh, pretty simple stuff here. Mouse settings, something I don't use. It's emulate the mouse, and I just never use that. So there it is. That's the driver. But what we're going to be doing most of our things, of course, is going to back out of this. It's going to be in the cool application called Fanata Lab. And I'm just going to go over this. I've gone over this before. I'm just going to do a, a very basic look at it here. Here you can see it actually sees my version 2.5 wheelbase and also my Formula V2 wheel. So everything's good there. And of course, the tuning menus where we're going to spend most of our time and yeah, for iRacing, you only got a couple things you can do here. Force feedback intensity and overall force feedback strength. So, yeah, it, you can play with those and pretty much get it dialed in where you want. The, uh, and of course, it's got these pop-ups, by the way, if you didn't notice, <laughs> that will tell you what each one of these sliders does. So force feedback or force effect to intensity, this is how I, I use the most as far as I'll usually turn the force feedback up to 100% and then I'll come down here and play with this slider to get the feel like I want to. 
you want it to feel all the details, but not so much detail that you have like notchiness around the center of the wheel, that kind of thing. Again, it's all subjective, but these are the two main things that you'll be using in iRacing. If you're in a game like Project Cars 2 that actually have these features, you can actually do the game spring dampener and those kind of adjustments here, and they will take effect on the wheel. So, but in iRacing doesn't use these, so I, I normally use iRacing anyway, so if you're in other games though, and I did do project cars in a set of course, and I got some, some video of that, uh, you can actually use these to adjust it in game. So this is where you spend most of your time and a good pop-ups will lead you to where you need to be. Dynamic force feedback. Now I always, I don't know why this is enabled, it should be disabled. I always disable this. This is for wheel escalation, oscillations, not escalations, Barry, oscillations. <laughs> so the oscillations going like you're going down a straight and you hit the wheel and it starts oscillating crazy on you you can actually turn that down and, and adjust it with this. I don't ever use that because I never take my hands off the wheel when I'm racing. I've got one hand on my steering wheel at all times. I'm sure there's some people who don't and need to control their oscillations, but yeah, I never had a problem with it. So I'd usually just disable this stuff and don't use it, but it's nice to know it's there. You know, at certain speeds, it will, you know, depending on when you want the overlay to take effect over certain speeds, you don't, you probably won't want it to. The effect range is where the steering wheel is away from center. And of course, how much you want to employ. But again, I don't use that. Uh, vibration, I don't use that. LED, this is where we can come in and program our LEDs to do what we want. Very cool. Again, Fnatalab is a very cool thing here. ITM, well, we don't have it. It's the intelligence telemetry mode. I have that enabled, but it, it doesn't work for the wheelbase too. It will work on the DD1 and DD2s though. Not there yet for the uh, 2.5 wheelbase, but they say they're working on it. Game profile, this is where we can do all our different profiles and load a bunch of them. Whereas before we were only, uh, we only had five like in the menu down here on the wheel. You press that and you've got settings one and you can go two, three, four, five and it, that's it. You just have five of them. So here we can do a lot more than five because we can save each one of these configurations. So very cool that again, you gotta be using Fanana Lab if you're using this 2.5 wheelbase or the DD series, podium series wheels. It's just so much easier to use, so much more functionality, and yeah. So anyway, so that's what I'll be using to tune my wheel when I'm driving. And also, what's cool here, let's go back in the tuning manual. Let's take the overall force field. Let's, uh, I'm in setting one here on my steering wheel. Hopefully you guys can see that. I'm trying to get in close enough. But I'm going to go ahead and press on that to get to where I want to be. Whoops, there we go. Go to force feedback, FF. And right now, whoops, that thing is a little sensitive. There we go. Right now it's at 100. It's also 100 up here in Fanana Lab. If I click on this and start reducing that, you'll see in the window it actually go down. It will go down too. See, I'm clicking, so it's going down. Pretty cool. So again, that proves that we're adjusting it up here and we're doing exactly what we would be doing if I was clicking in here and adjusting everything manually. So yeah, pretty cool, I think. I'll go ahead and get out of that. All right, so that's it for the software. Then that's what I'll be using to adjust this. And of course, force feedback is a very subjective thing. There's a lot of arguments going on about what's good and what isn't. I say just tune it the way you like it, the way you want it to feel, that gives you the most information to allow you to control the car the best that you can. Right, so now let's just get on to the driving segment. So here we are in iRacing in the Ferrari 488 GT3 at Sebring, my usual test bed. And yeah, first thing is I did have to get a little bit used to going to a belt driven wheel base from a direct drive, but just spend a little time with it and reacquaint myself with it just to, to concentrate on what it's doing. And also the certain expectations that you bring to the table when you're using a belt driven force feedback wheelbase. And first off, it's a very smooth wheelbase from the get go. If, you know, it's very smooth. They have very good bearings in here, these seal bearing units. Everything is, is precisionly ground, serpentine belts. So it's very smooth just by moving it by hand before you ever apply any power to it. And that smoothness does translate over to the force feedback that you get. Now, of course, all of this is going to be tunable. And that's where really things start to get very subjective when you are tuning a wheel for force feedback. And I've always been of the school that you, to tune it to where I can feel the effects coming from the game that allow me to control the car the way I want to. In other words, let me know what the car is doing exactly when it's doing it and allows me to put steering inputs in to correct or to 
follow through with whatever I'm feeling. And again, I think that's the most important aspect of when you use a force feedback wheel, be it belt driven or direct drive, it really doesn't matter. You're still trying to accomplish the same thing. And here with the, uh, the Spanalab belt driven wheel, the, the 2.5 Club Sport, it really delivered as, as well as I thought that it would. And in iRacing, there's, not, there's no, the game, force fe the, the game effects aren't um, available to you in the Fanatolab. So you're basically using the force feedback slider and the force intensity uh, slider to make the adjustments to the wheel to make them feel like you want to. And of course, in the game, you can also adjust the driver, the iRacing driver, using its newton meter settings and power settings. So anyway, yeah, I was able to find a pretty happy place here that I, I would have seen it like to see it feel a little better at my happy place where I could I, I could feel enough detail that made me comfortable to know exactly what the car was doing when I was going over curbs or getting going through a corner pushing hard and, and losing the front end start losing grip which lot which told me the rear end was coming around these things when it was conveyed to me in eye racing I was able to react quick enough but at that point I did have a little bit I, I want to call it a little bit of a chatty wheel and I would, and the more dampening, you could obviously get rid of it by putting dampening into it. And the more dampening I put into it, though, it would take away that 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 edge feel that I wanted. And of course, it's a, it's a balance. It's always a compromise between these two things. And also, when you have it running full power and you've got details turned way up, there's a the the chance that you'll get oscillations if you take your hand off the wheel going down a bumpy road. But I never take my hands off the wheel, so this was never a concern for me. You know, it's just something I don't do when I'm racing a car and with one hand on it on the wheel it never oscillated ever but again i would like to see maybe a dampening um, slider that wasn't as as aggressive as this one is because it was just i just couldn't find the exact right spot i wanted but it, that didn't affect as far as the the quality of the drive i was getting and being able to control the car and know what it was doing it's kind of a, just a personal thing and again all this stuff is subjective when it comes to force feedback and yeah it, some people will agree with some things and some will say, no, that's crazy. You can't do that. But overall, the experience is pretty much meeting my expectation here with this wheelbase in, in iRacing. And of course, we obviously went to other games too. I actually went over to, I think the next one was a set of Corsa. And yeah, I was in the Ferrari. Here we are. I was in the Ferrari 488, uh, also the GT car here. And just so I can keep the cars the same. And this is my usual track, Laguna Sega. Uh, for trying everything out and so I can keep my baseline the same and here again I was able to get something dialed in that was comfortable to and first off a set of courses Let me tell you about a sort of course at least my feelings of it. Some people swear it has the best uh, Force feedback ever and sometimes it does but sometimes it doesn't it's just kind of a variable thing for me when I'm, I'm testing wheel sets out and yeah here it was it was actually not too bad it was it was let me know exactly where the car was like especially that turn i just went through that's a hard turn to recover from at full speed when you're going through that dip and drifting all the way out to the outside there's a fine line there you can't cross or you just keep going <laughs> and i was able to feel it going through that dip very well and here at the corkscrew also i was able to feel the wheel was letting me know what the car was doing very well and i could really push it to the edge in those places without losing it so that's that's a testament to the wheel doing its job and allowing you to push the car hard where you need to, but still be able to maintain control without losing uh, that control and crashing into somebody and ruining their day too. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, overall, this wheel's doing a good job. Again, meeting expectations uh, is, is just getting the job done here. I mean, if, if you get with this wheel and you can tune it to just about, I think anybody could get a good feeling out of here uh, or out of it that would allow you to properly control the car and know where its limits are and that's really what force feedback is all about at the end of the day of course it's nice going over rumble strips and by the way the rumble strips here at a set of course are very cool they really give you a good rumble in the in the steering wheel that i was using here this v2 formula wheel from fanatic and yeah it's just doing a good job on the rumble strips i think better than it was in in i racing actually so there are some some places where a set of courses shines a little bit brighter than i racing and of course, people also say other games have better um, force feedback than I racing, like uh, R Factor 2, things like that. But anyway, this wheel should function well in all those games. I did run in Project Cars 2 also. I just don't have the video showing it, which is just with me driving, basically. But yeah, uh, Project Cars is always a hit and miss with me for sure. 
It's, um, in fact, it's mostly a miss. I just can't get the, the force feedback in that, in that game to, to get it just where I want it, to know, to feel like I'm always can control the car and know where the limits are all the time. It's just, again, it, but then again, Project Cars isn't so much of a simulation like a set of course it wants to be, and of course iRacing is. So, in R Factor 2, those kind of games. So I really wasn't uh, too surprised at that. But again, it, it worked well and it, it did allow me enough feel to get around the track without uh, messing up too many times. So, yeah, end of the day, uh, it's doing what it's supposed to do. And I think anybody could get something dialed in, especially using Fanana Lab. Uh, now that we can use that with this uh, V2 or V2.5 wheelbase, which is a great thing to be able to do. And yeah, so, oh, almost lost it there. But see, I was able to recover that slide right there. So that's what I'm talking about. Being able to do that, because you're gonna get in trouble if you're pushing. I mean, that's just the nature of racing. And yeah, being able to do that, and that was a, usually a slide I don't recover from, because you see how drifty that slide was. So yeah, again, a testament to where I was able to get this thing dialed in to where it allows me to do that. And really, end of the day, that's all we're really looking for. Right, so I guess we'll just go ahead and get over to the final thoughts. Final thoughts on the Club Sport V2.5 wheelbase from Fnatic. You know, I've had my unit for a while now and have been using it off and on when I had the chance. This is Fnatic's flagship belt-driven solution. And once you have it in hand, it feels like it. At just over 10 pounds or 4.6 kilos, it has a nice heft to it. And it does give you an impression of durability. The faceplate is a single piece of 8 millimeter thick aluminum plate and a black anodized brushed finish. There seems to be plenty of ventilation in this unit, with airflow available on both sides and the rear. The rear cover is plastic, but it has a nice rubberized finish to it. I think having a plastic window on top of this wheelbase is a nice touch and lets the owner see some of the inner workings of this unit. Speaking of which, once we had the covers off and could get a better look at these inner workings, I think most would agree this is a solidly built wheelbase. All the rotating parts are riding on nice looking sealed bearings. The pulleys look to be solid units. Using grooved serpentine belts instead of the cogged belts only enhance the silky smooth feel the drivetrain has when you turn it by hand. The motor has some good looking cooling fins on it, which should keep the motor running cool with all that airflow that is available here from the two case fans. The electronics boards look to be very clean and well sorted. Having a haul position sensor on both the motor and the main steering shaft should give very good results as far as accuracy. Let's talk about the driving experience with this wheelbase. Now, tuning the 2.5 couldn't be easier using the latest Fanalab software. No more making adjustments on the small OLED screen. And all adjustments are in real time, so we don't have to exit to the pits for them to take effect. Now, when using the Club Sport 2.5, I was able to get it dialed in to a satisfying feel that allowed me to make steering inputs based on what I was feeling from the wheel. Now, of course, force feedback feel is a very subjective thing and will vary from driver to driver. The important thing is to have a wheelbase that you can tune to a point that allows you to feel what the car is doing and act on that information in a timely manner, making you a more consistent driver. I was able to do that with this wheelbase and the tuning app. So really no bad habits exhibited here. And I think my expectations were met. Now at $550 plus shipping, this is not an inexpensive unit. And the cost goes up fast when you start adding steering rims and other Fanatic goodies. <laughs> of course, if you already have some Fanatic gear, it will make the move to the Club Sport 2.5 a bit easier on the wallet. <laughs> I'm Barry Rowland. Thanks again for watching the Sim Racing Garage channel. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And 
If you would like to help support what I do here at the SRG, visit my website at simracinggarage.com.